Each of our lives is a story, and with each new person we meet, we become a part of their story, and they become a part of ours. Remembering back to, we were all just lost kids trying to find light in a dark world. Today, we get to tell you the greatest story ever told, how Jesus took all that darkness away. Let's get into this video. Cartel got me working for the big faces Federale got my car full of brick cases Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking Eyes picked to my back for my shoelaces Got out, shoulda seen the look on they faces All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper Set up by the crew, they done put a banger In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there No thing, then attorney went and beat the case Got a job digging holes for minimum wage Had a dream that Kato said he proud of me Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling Six times failing, I went back to prison Got my head right, got my bread right Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe Trying to do right, I got a mission Trying to get back to my boys in the prison The old me's gone, I ain't never... Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my team, mi familia, mi raza, you already know what time it is. Suente la suburba, because we about to go see Jesus. What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Ron Strong. All in your name, all in your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all the The cartel used to be a men's only game and women were kept around for parties and you know trophies today women have emerged as a powerful force in the cartel world the cartel pretty girls <laughs> with tight jeans and stilettos are in leadership positions now and as hit women i don't want to say hit men valerie gaitan you probably heard her name before was my first boss in the drug game I was 13 when I met her. She was dating the leader of my street gang. She always looked like money, the way she dressed, the way she talked, the way she walked. She always had expensive stuff on. I, I was homeless, a, a runaway, so I, I would be from house to house and pretty much just doing dirt for my gang because I didn't have nowhere else to go. I, I call it self-suicide because I was always out there trying to get killed. I was sleeping from house to house. There was times where I just walked because there was nobody out or everybody was sleeping, everybody was in. So I would walk from my dad's house all the way on Roosevelt and Cicero, all the way to 59th and Christiana. Yeah. Man, I was hungry in those days. I was hungry. I was scared. I was alone. So many times I got chased, you know, by other gangs uh, just because I was walking in areas where I shouldn't have. No kid should go through this. No kid. It was cold one night. It was below zero. And I was like really worried of where I was going to sleep that night. And I think Val felt bad for me. And she asked me. She made me stay at her house. <laughs> her boyfriend almost killed me for it. <laughs> That's another whole video. <laughs> yeah, she showed me more love than my own gang did. That's for sure. I stayed with her for a month and it was like drug lord school. <laughs> we were always driving places, talking to people, Delivering, counting money, picking up, dropping off. She put me on. She put a lot of people on. She was my cartel mom. 
Just like that, she got me my first job. I mean, what 16-year-old kid is walking around with 12K in his pocket? Uh, not too many. But I want it more, and I, I think she wanted more also. We got greedy. We started to do all the dirty work. And what I mean by the dirty work is Valerie's job was to get the drivers. My job was to get the drivers and myself from Mexico to Chicago. Once the cars got to Chicago, we just turned the cars in and got paid. We got greedy, so we wanted to do all the dirty work. We wanted to bring the tank down, cut it open, take the drugs out, weigh them, put them in bags, drop them off to the people that had already paid for them, pick up the money, take the money. All that extra work just because of greed that almost cost us our life. I think it was like on my third trip, I pulled into the garage. We were gonna get to work. I, I dropped the tank down. Valerie was, uh, you know, just being a manager right there, standing around, <laughs> making jokes. And I didn't realize how dangerous this was until later on. You know, I was taking all the gas out, taking all the gas out in the bucket and pouring it into the sewer. Surprised how much gas was in the tank still. But all of a sudden, you start you started hearing like these these explosions. And it was like explosions back to back. Like it was like boom, 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 boom. And as soon as it started getting like closer to us, I honestly I felt like it was like an earthquake because the whole floor was shaking. It, it just felt like weird. But the explosions were getting louder and louder and it just wouldn't stop. So we ran out the garage and into the house, to the basement. It was fire literally coming out of the uh, sewer. I remember that weekend because it was Valerie's son's birthday and the piñata got completely like burnt down to the ground from the fire coming out of the, the ground. I'm not gonna lie, like it felt like we were going to hell. The fire, how it was shaking, it, it was bad. We started to hear all the sirens from the firefighters. We started to panic. <laughs> I, I ran to the garage and, and locked the door, but I, I left the water running. We were standing right in the gangway when the firefighters came in and the cops came into the front. And they were just kind of like looking around because they didn't know what was going on either. They were checking three houses in that whole area. I mean, our, was, our house was the worst just because the flames came through the sewer and, and burnt the piñata, so like our our house smelled like smoke. It, it looked like it started there. Valerie did her thing, you know, she was talking to the cops, talking to the firefighters, kept trying to get them out of there, trying to leave. And it seemed like everything was okay. I, I was a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie. But it seemed like everything was okay and the firefighters started to leave and one of them heard the water in the garage. So he turned around to Valerie and he's like, there's there's running water in the garage. And Val was like, I forgot what she said. It was that moment where you kind of feel like you're gonna get arrested in that second right there. I ended up leaving and we went back in the garage. We finished doing what we were doing. Later, later that month, we found out one of our friend's uncles had passed away by doing the same thing. We never did it again. <laughs> <laughs> when you're young and it's almost like you, you you don't know that you're living I guess in sin I no it's not I guess it's it is you're living in sin so you're constantly you think it's normal so you're constantly sinning you're living like that so you think it's normal 
And the more you do it, the better you get at it. <laughs> we did bad things most of our lives. And thinking that it was okay and it was like normal. Bad, you might ask yourself bad things like what? Like, have you ever killed someone, committed adultery, had sex with a friend's wife, stolen money, purposely try to hurt someone? Those are really bad, right? Those are like in my life. But sin is sin, whether, even if you just think it in your head, it's still there. God says if you look at a woman with unclean thoughts, you're committing adultery. I know a lot of individuals who have done all those things and more, but God has forgiven them. I'm one of them. The key is, is Jesus and, and repentance. Christ died for, for us while we were all still sinners. He didn't say, be good and I'll die for you. The main thing is, it's not where you were, but, but where you are now. Just, if you're tired, just come home. Just come home. If you need more help, visit us at www.rogerstrong.com. We have a spear program or download the free PDF file for the Wrong Strong Discipleship Program. Let Jesus do what he came to do. Get out the way. Because without him, we're powerless. I know what he's done in my life and how he's changed me and how I glorify him for everything that he's done in my life and how I feel. What he's brought to light and how he's taking the veils off my eyes. I live a really good life today with a lot of peace and with a lot of joy. I'm not scared no more. I'm not worried. I know what he promised and I'm living it to the fullest. My name is JC. I am wrong is strong. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage and remember, live for him. Catch you guys in the rebound.